so what is the status of of the playing games and when to play games moving forward over the next I mean we're we're rubber is now meeting the road sir as you know there's three weeks to go there's a lot of Saturday games there's also um you know uh, a playoffs right around the corner as well so it's funny that we're running out of time in the longest regular season ever but that is the case you know here's what ultimately happened over the past few days and I'll put it like this the castle was being stormed the walls were being breached by the virus and labor and management got together and they just decided to tear down the walls I mean that's basically what's occurred the 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 principles underlying the COVID protocols were starting to interfere with practicality, which meant profit and paycheck at risk as well. And nothing gets the NFL and the NFLPA together than the shared threat that they're going to lose money. And that really is what forced it. NFLPA leadership was kind of caught in the middle because they were advocating a more responsible approach. But as someone explained it to me yesterday, the pandemic is now endemic to society. And with this Omicron variant that is spreading like wildfire and that is not making very many of the vaccinated people who get it sick, the only thing to do at this point is just stop testing the vaccinated asymptomatic players. They're not testing them except on a very targeted basis. It's hard to understand. It's not quite the same as the random testing for PEDs or other things of that nature. And they will test anyone who's symptomatic or who wants to be tested. But, you know, Rich, the concern, I've already heard it, people are going to hide their symptoms. They're not going to come in and put mm. their hand up and say, I don't feel right today. They're going to keep their mouth shut. They're going to keep their head low because they want to play. They want to play. They want to coach. They want to be available, especially during these critical weeks of the season. So that introduces even more of the virus in mm. the building. The people really at risk are the unvaccinated. Now, they can reduce their risk by getting vaccinated, but there's going to be a lot more virus in the building now because they're not going to have that gatekeeping function that will – keep vaccinated players who are positive out of the facility so you know it, it, they're just they're waving the white towel on this and or waving the white flag or throwing the towel i'll mix my metaphors if i damn well please it's christmas <laughs> week right. but they're giving up they're just giving up and now if this gets worse if all of a sudden there's some new variant that makes people sicker or something like that they'll, they'll pivot but for now they've just recognized widespread virus low incident of sickness at least they believe. We have to get out of the way at least that's what you know people are hoping i mean i i i don't know you 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 hear it is just as severe as delta and god forbid if it is you know um and i guess we'll find out and i guess what's happening in the nba and the nfl is is kind of foreshadowing potentially what's happening or, or what's happening in real time because this this variant seems to be uh, having a doubling rate of, of every other day, potentially, you know, from what you're seeing. So who knows if, if the way that they're approaching the protocols right now will be operative even next week. That is a fact, right? Well, that's I mean, right. And Dr. Sills told Peter King that in today's football morning in America that they are going to continue to monitor. And if it changes again, they're going to have to be ready to pivot. But the goal at this point, as I understand it, get through the season and then figure everything out after the season but it is amazing to me rich when you consider that the average player from the get-go from the moment that the pandemic became a thing march 11 of 2020 the average football player doesn't care never did care views himself rightly or wrongly as impervious to it healthy enough it's not an issue for me it's way down on the list of the risks that i assume when i put on my uniform and my helmet and go out onto a football field it's amazing the union held them together as long as they did because this mindset has always been there. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care. And it finally prevailed because we're getting to a point where throughout society, it's getting harder and harder to get people to care. And, you know, here we are, holiday week, people traveling, people getting together. What do we do? I think there's this widespread belief, and it's crossed over to the NFL that we just go forward and we see what happens. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.